Hello everybody. Um, this is going to be the first half of my top 10 favorite fragrances of all time. Now, um, I've gotten my nose on a lot of fragrances in the past year, at least a, like a thousand, at least a thousand. I'm not even kidding. Um, I love to sample. I love to try new things. I've sampled probably just about everything from Lucky Scent, um, unless they come out with new, new houses. Um, generally, I hop right on it and uh, sample new things. Um, I've smelled every fragrance I possibly could in Lord and Taylor, J.C. Penney, Macy, Sephora. Um, I've I've smelled a lot. I've smelled some pretty good discontinued stuff. Just let's just say that I've got my nose on a lot. So these are my favorite fragrances that I have come across um, pretty much ever. Just the ones that do it for me, the ones that I could live with for the rest of my life. Um, there are some gourmand, some fresh scents, um, a couple aquatics, uh, daring scents. It's a little bit of everything in here. There's some some ones that people would consider to be synthetic that I love, that are signature scents of mine that I use um, at least a couple times a week. There are ones in here that people consider to be disgusting, but I love. Um, so you're going to get a little bit of everything out of this list, and basically these 20 are my favorite that I've ever come across from um, niche and designer, although I will say this, there's a lot more expensive fragrances in this list than there are designer. And the reason for that is um, I really like I liked things for a long time that would challenge me a little bit, and I learned to really love uh, some of these. And some of them are mainstream. Like some of these are going to be ones that everybody hypes up. So um, for the longest time, I didn't want to participate in hyping things up. I didn't want to participate in checking out things that everybody loved. I was just like, whatever. Everybody loves it. I don't want to participate in that. Like. Lair de Desert Metal Cane, for example, I just wanted no part in it. And then I smelled it. I was like, holy shit, that is amazing. Um, Shiragi, I didn't want any part of. I smelled it. Holy shit, that is amazing. So, um, uh, when people recommend things to you that are really popular like that, don't be afraid to try them just because it's popular. Uh, chances are it's just popular with us on YouTube, not really with most people. You're not going to smell it on the street. Um, if it's a Creed or a Bond and you're in New York City, sure, you'll probably smell it around somewhere. But uh, for the most part, most people aren't going to be spending uh, upwards of 200 300 bucks a bottle. It's, they're not crazy like us. So that shouldn't really, um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be afraid to try the things that people um, are really raving about. Because I kind of was at first. I was like, why, why do I want to try something that everybody loves? And uh, the reason is, is because it's delicious. So let's kick it off here. At number 20 um, is one of my favorite scents all around. Easy to get along with. I like vanilla a lot. It's kind of, kind of, van I'm actually wearing it today. Uh, tea, vanilla, you could have guessed it. It's by an amazing perf perfumier, uh, Anik Minardo. It is Bulgari's Black. Um, I find this to be uh, very versatile. That's just me, though. I mean, a lot of people get rubber out of it. I, I kind of think that rubbery smell is more more or less a citrus, a harsh citrus at the beginning, and it just goes away really quick on my skin. Um, so I don't really think it's like a rubbery type smell, really. Um, I love this for work. I love it for dates. I love it for just chilling. It's a great scent. It's a comforting scent. I really enjoy it. Um, it's, it's number 20 on my list, and I will always have a bottle of this. Number 20, Bulgari's Black. Number 19 um, is a, a very liked fragrance. Um, I love, everybody loves this thing. Uh, there's a few people that don't enjoy it, um, say that it smells some, somewhat dirty. I don't know how anybody could get dirty out of this, but um, I, I bring this with me when I travel. Um, it's one of my favorite scents. It's, it's a crowd pleaser. Everybody seems to love this on me. Um, it's masculine and citrusy, and there's a little sweetness to it, a little bit. It's great for anything for me. Gym, um, dressing up, going to work, chilling, anything, anything with this fragrance. It's just amazing. Um, Dior Ohm Sport. Now, as you can see on the left, 
well, your guys' is right, my left. <laughs> um, Dior Ohm Sport 50 ml. I bring this guy with me when I go traveling, and this guy pretty much just sits on my shelf, and I use this whenever I go to work or the gym or something like that. Um, it's basically my designated gym scent if I feel like wearing something. Generally, I don't enjoy uh, those guys that go into the gym that douse themselves in cologne because it kind of makes me nauseous when I'm working out. You know, you really push yourself. Uh, you don't want to be smelling really sweet fragrances or anything like that. This is just beautiful. I love this stuff. I, you know, another masterpiece from Christian Dior. Um, and it is number 19 for good reason. I absolutely adore it. And everybody loves it. I mean, it's a compliment getter. You can't go wrong with it. Um, great fragrance at number 19. Number 18 is a fragrance I just reviewed for you guys. Um, it is Mona de Oreo's Vanille. Now, this is more or less probably my favorite vanilla fragrance. It's a boozy, uh, kind of animalic vanilla. And at first, it kind of is a little difficult to get along with. It's very earthy, um, kind of kind of boozy, and really uh, it got a lot of uh, spices in it. And um, it is animalic, but it dries down to be like a really nice rum and vanilla and it's amazing um, just think if um, like musk ravageur was was um, it's kind of it kind of reminds me of musk ravageur in a way I like musk ravageur better um, people say that that just turns into a vanilla scent I get like a cinnamon bun kind of a feel uh, with vanilla and uh, musk this is amazing I mean I, I did a review on it. I, I love this stuff I think it's great Great for uh, going out, sharing with the person you're close to. Okay, so number 17 is going to get me some comments, I think. It's going to get me bashed a little bit. I don't care, though. I love it. I think it's great. It's actually my favorite from this house, um, and it's completely mainstream. It's um, a bestseller, one of the bestsellers at Sephora. It's, like, probably number two or three. Um and that is a Blue de Chanel. That's right. This is my favorite from Chanel. I love it. I think it's great. I don't know why everybody gives this shit. Um, basically, I'm getting some fruit, some incense, some ginger. What's not to like? It's like it's it's like a fresh scent with some depth. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it for work. I love it for going on a date. I love it for anything. Anything goes with this one. Another crowd pleaser, but, oh, man, I just love it. I love it. Um, and actually, just like Mickers, that is actually one of the ones that I recommend um, to a lot of people. That, Dior, Durham, Dior Ohm Sport are like the two that I always recommend to people if they want to check out a fragrance um, for like a signature scent. Those two are usually the ones I mention. So, um, next on the list is uh, another favorite in the community. Everybody loves this guy. I love this guy. Um, it's not my favorite incense-based fragrance, but it's up there. It's on the top 20 list. Um, and that is Lair du Desert Metal Cane by Andy Tower. Um, a gorgeous bottle. I love the bottle. Caps are made out of wood. Oh, People say that it's like amber and incense. Um, it does get pretty sweet on my skin towards the, like, the end of the, the mid and the dry down, um, which would be the amber. And it's just a beautiful combination of both. But it is definitely, to me, more of an incense fragrance than it is um, uh, an amber fragrance. But you can decide on your own how you feel about that. I personally just think that it's more about the incense and spice than it is about the amber um, although the amber does play a big role in the dry down. So that is number 17. Um, oh, I'm sorry, number 16. Um, number 15. Um, this is probably, most likely, my signature scent for a night out um, in the summertime. So I have, you know, my signature scent for the summertime. But this is like the, sign like the one I grab for the most when I'm going out. Or if it's really super hot, like scorching out, you know. Um, this is just amazing to me. A lot of people think it's boring, say it gets shitty longevity. 
I don't know what you're smoking. Um, I'm getting like freaking eight, ten hours out of this. I'm not even joking you. There's a hay note in it, and it makes it kind of stick to my skin. Uh, it is Bigros Concentré. Bigros Concentré by Jean-Claude Elena. And um, I fucking love this stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, this was a blind buy, too. Uh, recommended by Mark. And I bought this last April, May, April. I don't know. Oh, I use this thing so much, like, during the summer. I don't know. That's kind of a good little chunk gone. Just for using it during the summer. I definitely don't pull this out during the winter or autumn. But uh, it is a pretty unique citrus. It's very well done citrus with, like, this wet hay note in it as well. And I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So now, uh, number 14 is another that everybody loves. Um, this would be in a lot of people's top 10, top 5, even a lot of people's favorite. But for me, um, it's doing pretty well at 14. Uh, it is from the house of Serge Luton's. It is my favorite Serge Luton's fragrance, and for good reason, it is Sheer Guy. Um, I, I basically only use this if I'm going to um, an upper uh, upper class sort of bar, or if I'm going out with the GF. Um, Basically, that's it. I don't use it for uh, casual use. It's more or less used for special occasions for me. I don't even need to say anything about this. There's plenty of reviews on it. Um, smoky, not really smoky, but um, a dry, dry amber with some sweetness. And the hay note, once again, uh, another fragrance with a hay note. I actually found that I love like wet hay. It's actually paired very well with um, dry amber and tobacco and it's paired very well with the citrus because it gives it almost like a um, wet feeling in the bigger concentre paired very well with the dryness with the tobacco and this fragrance so that is sheer Guy at number 14 number 13 um, we're getting down to one of my favorite designer scents of all time there are a few more designer scents on this list but this is one of the best to me um, you're just going to get compliments. It is the number one bestseller at Sephora, um, at least the Sephora that's around me. Number one bestseller at Sephora, recommended by me. Oh, this is another one that I recommend to people when they want a um, signature scent. This is no slouch by any means. I love it. It is amazing. It is amazing for casual use, for going out. You're going to get compliments. It's uh, a crowd pleaser. It's great, though. I love it. Boozy apple sort of a smell. Very clean and fresh. Yves Saint Laurent's Loam. Loam is amazing. And I use this all year long. Um, I actually had a smaller bottle. Went through it all. Oh, love this stuff. And girls go nuts for this stuff. Oh, man. One of the most complimented fragrance ever um, for me. So that is Loam at number 13. We are getting to the last two fragrances for part one of my top 20 favorites. Um, so, number 12. This is an amazing fragrance. Um, it gets a lot of hype. It's a very sensual, somewhat animalic fragrance. Um, amazing. I mentioned it earlier already. And it just does it for me, uh, especially when I am going out dressed up, um, suit, suit and tie, or even button up shirt tucked in the khaki sort of a deal. So, um, this is what I generally would grab for, or if I'm going to a loud bar. And it is Maurice Grossel's masterpiece, Mascara Vajora. Um, this is amazing. This is another one that would be on, uh, some people's top 10 list of all time. For me, it almost made it. It just got cut out of the list. But it is my top 20, and I adore it. So as you can see, there are two Frederick Mall fragrances that are on this list. Uh, Frederick Mall is an absolutely exquisite, amazing house. Um, there are a few others that I love from that house. They wouldn't be on my top 20 or top 40, though, but they are still very good. And this is just amazing. Dirty vanilla cinnamon bun sort of smell. Very good, very sensual, very warming. Amazing. Uh, there are, again, a lot of reviews on that fragrance. Um, you're not going to get anyone to argue that it's a bad fragrance. I don't think. It is amazing. And now, 
number 11. Um, just squeaked out a top 10 list. I love this stuff. Love it. And as you can see, I mean, my top 10 list is going to be like the cream of the crop for me um, because these, these other 10 that made the 20 um, are all very, very good. That would be in some people's top 10, top 5. Some of them are people's favorite. Um, this is no slouch. It's another Maurice Roussel creation from the House of Bond number 9. It is not my favorite Bond number 9, but it is my second favorite Bond number 9 fragrance. And that is New Harlem. Best coffee scent on the market. Uh, syrupy. It's just amazing. And if you want compliments, if you want something that's going to get you doused in compliments, this is who you should be looking at right here. You want to go out feeling extra fly. You want to go out, feel sexy, and just on the top of your game. This is what you need to be wearing. Number 11, New Harlem by Bond Number 9. Um, absolutely amazing. Another one of my most complimented fragrances ever. Um, this, this list means a lot to me. I hope you guys enjoy. Part 2 will be coming soon. I hope you guys will tune in for the top 10 favorite fragrances of all time. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.